Ready when you are. Joshua tells us to be strong and courageous, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see everyone this morning. Welcome to worship. Um, we had a really fun Easter party yesterday, and I thank everyone who helped with that. And um, may God bless our time together, and may we continue to feel God's presence as we journey together towards Easter morning. Marty has announcements for us. Good morning. Good morning. Happy 
Happy birthday to Jeff Berg on the 27th and Amy Harmon on the 30th. Thank you to everyone who helped with the Children's Easter party yesterday. Bridge Builders is Wednesday the 29th at 2.40 p.m. Chimes Choir is Wednesday at 6.15. Bible study is Thursday at 11.30 in the fellowship room and on Zoom. We will have a Zoom council meeting Thursday at 7 p.m. Palm Sunday is next Sunday with worship at 10.30 a.m. beginning with the Children's Palm Parade. And the Monday Thursday meal and service is on April 6th at 6 p.m. We will have a communion and tenebrae service as we remember the Last Supper and Jesus' last week as we end the service in silence with just the Christ candle burning. Easter Sunday is April 9th with a breakfast buffet at 9 till 10.15 and worship at 10.30 and then children's Easter egg hunt on the church's front lawn following worship. And the rescheduled Piano Guys concert is at Playhouse Square on April 15th at 8 p.m. Our next church dinner will be on the fourth Sunday of April, the 22nd, from 4 to 6. We will be having a mother-child brunch on Saturday, March 13th at 10.30 with more prizes and entertainment. And mark your calendars for VBS on July 17th through the 21st from 6 to 8 p.m. And as always, please remember Jeff and Kathleen um, as they go through Jeff's um, bio, yeah, clinical trials, thank you. And Danny Sands. Do we have anyone else? I'd like to thank everyone who contributed to the Easter basket that we they, uh, uh, assembled 25 baskets that were taken to the Center of Hope on Monday, and they really look nice. There's some nice pictures on Facebook, I think, thanks to, to uh, Ask Susan. So uh, take a look at, at those. We really appreciate all of that. Um, just a little update on Jeff. We had a little blip again on Friday. Um, they were there for some pretty routine things. Unfortunately, he fell twice. And they... Um, took him to the emergency room and, and checked him out, but they wanted to keep him. Of course, there were no beds at, at that moment, so they had to wait for a while, and the, the big poncho with the ten, cancer um, area came in because he was the C. Jeff, and uh, he got in the room. You know, it can't be done. So Jeff and Kathleen both stayed there Friday night and Saturday night, totally unprepared to do that, but um, he had some, some uh, Things scheduled on, on Tuesday, and uh, so um, they decided that he would stay to keep the room as much as anything, and they wanted to watch it. And a big thing, Kathleen drove home from Cleveland alone this morning and got here fine, and that that's a big accomplishment. She'll feel good about that, so we we are happy about that. Um, Sherry Boston, I think, is scheduled for her surgery at UH Cleveland tomorrow. So we'll hope that goes well. Um, certainly that's been a long time in coming, so let's keep them in our thoughts. I think Danny Sands is now at Lawn Meadow, uh, so that's why they were done. So that's, that's good. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have anyone else? Let's continue with the morning worship. So a few years ago, there was a letter that made the national news because it was sent to someone who had died, and it was sent by the Indiana Department of Social Services, and it read like this. It said, your food stamps will be stopped in March because we received notice that you passed away. May God bless you. You may reapply if there's a change in your circumstances. <laughs> And I was thinking, well, unless her name was Lazarus, that probably wouldn't um, be the case. But God does change our circumstances, and we're going to talk about that today. But let's begin with our call to worship. A shaft of light on a dismal day. A whisper in an early morning fog. A surge of hope in the face of despair. The words of a song that float in when our minds are anxious, the sacrifice of Christ that challenges us, the love of Christ that encourages us. Call it mystery. Name it grace. For God is present in all of life. And often in simple and surprising ways. 
Let's sing together down at the cross. join together in our unison opening prayer of Lord's Prayer. We come into your presence, O God, with eager hearts. Some of us come with hearts of joy, and some of us come loaded down with heavy burdens. Help us to open our hearts to you as you reveal to us a love that hopes all things, endures all things, and never fails as we journey together with Jesus on this Lenten journey to Easter, and as we join our voices together praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our Psalter responsive reading is Psalm 130. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my cry for mercy. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? With you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. 
I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I put my hope. My soul waits for the Lord, more than watchmen wait for the morning, more than watchmen wait for the morning. O Israel, put your hope in the Lord, for with the Lord is unfailing love, and with him is full redemption. He himself will redeem Israel from all their sins. Lazarus was ill. He was from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. This Mary, whose brother Lazarus now lay ill, was the same one who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. So the sisters sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is ill. When he heard this, Jesus said, 
this illness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory, so that God's Son may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed where he was two more days. And then he said to his disciples, let us go back to Judea. But Rabbi, they said, a short while ago the Jews there tried to stone you, and yet you are going back. Jesus answered, are there not twelve hours of daylight? Anyone who walks in the daytime will not stumble, for they see by this world's light. It is when a person walks at night that they stumble, for they have no light. After he had said this, he went on to tell them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to wake him up. His disciples replied, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get better. Jesus had been speaking of his death, but his disciples thought he meant natural sleep. So then he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead, and for your sake I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe, but let us go to him. Then Thomas, also known as Didymus, said to the rest of the disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him. But Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died, but I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she replied. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who has come into the world. After she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary aside. The teacher is here, she said, and is asking for her. When Mary heard this, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet entered the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who had been with Mary in the house comforted her, noticed how quickly she got up and went out, they followed her, supposing she was going to the tomb to mourn there. When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him? He asked. Come and see him, they replied. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there is a bad odor, for he has been there four days. Then Jesus said, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? 
So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, Jesus called out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped in strips of linen, and a cloth round his face. And Jesus said to them, Take off the grave clothes and let him go. Seeing what Jesus did, believed in him. Grace and peace and mercy be unto you from a loving and a merciful God. Well, if you've ever wondered or pondered that question of why did God ever want to come here to earth? Why, why would God want to be born as one of us, live with us? Well, I think this whole story of Jesus and Lazarus and Mary and Martha, I think it paints this whole awesome picture for us. What do I mean? Well, here in this one story, I think we see in Jesus the compassion of God. We, we see the power of God and the, the very heart of God, the ability of God to take what seems to be lost or dead or hopeless and all of those things and to breathe new life, not only into one person, but also into a whole situation. We see the mercy of God and we see the empathy of a loving God. And I think we see in Jesus um, a God who is not only a savior, but also a best friend. All of, that, all of that is this huge part, I think, of why God wanted to come to earth to be with us, to, to show us who God is, to show us just how much we are loved, and to show us that when we hurt and when we rejoice that God is right there with us, feeling all those things right along with us, and to show us that death never has the last say, but life and love do. Pastor Brett Blair was talking one day about a young ministerial student who was doing an internship at his church um, one summer, and um, the intern went over to the chapel one Sunday morning. He he was going to serve Holy Communion all by himself for the very first time, and he was feeling a little bit nervous, you know, a little bit scared. And Brett said that back then they had um, uh, the communion ritual was on this card, and it was laminated, and it started out with the invitation to communion, and that it had on it the prayer of confession, and it had the prayer of consecration. And then just before the people would come forward to receive communion, there was a line that says, hear these words of comfort from the scriptures. And then it was just a blank space because the pastor could say whatever scripture passage the passage the pastor wanted to at that point. And um, so when they got to that point of the service, the young ministerial student stood and said the words, hear these words of comfort from the scriptures. And then he said his mind just went totally blank. And he stood there for a little bit, and there was this long pause, and finally he blurted out the only verse he could think of, which was, Jesus wept. Well, he said later that he told Brett about what happened, and he said, 
that he was feeling kind of bad about it. Um, but then one of the members came to him after the service and said to him, you know, when you quoted that scripture passage, Jesus wept, that was so meaningful to me because he said, suddenly I realized that the healer of our pain is also the feeler of our pain. The healer of our pain is the feeler of our pain. It's a big reason why Jesus was born here, why God wanted to come to us in the flesh, so that we would understand that God understands our grief, our sorrows, he knows our struggles, that God understands all of our feelings and is always there for us. There's a minister serving um, now in Virginia. His name is Al Hainer. And um, Al tells kind of a powerful story of his early days of ministry. He says he came out of seminary ready to be a super preacher. You know, he was going to single handedly um, solve all the problems of the world. You know, he'd been, been trained, he was well prepared. He was now this pastor, and um, he was serving this little community in Virginia. And he was going to be this super pastor that had all the answers. And he was just ready to spout them to the world with this kind of pious religious authority. And so he did for a while. And um, then one morning the phone rang and the father of his board chairman had suddenly died. And Al started to, to their home and all of a sudden it, he said it just kind of hit him. I don't know what to do. You know, I'm their pastor. I, I'm, I'm feeling kind of scared. I'm not really sure what I what I need to say to them. And he tried to remember all of his classes on pastoral care, and he tried to recall all the appropriate passages from Scripture that he could quote to them, and he tried to think of some profound theological message that he could say to them in their shocked hour of need. So he kind of plotted out his strategy, and then he thought, okay, you know, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go in, I'm going to take charge, I'm going to gather the family in the living room, and I will say to them Psalm 23. That's what I'm going to do. That's the answer, he thought. But there was one thing he hadn't counted on, and when he got to the home and he gathered the family all together in the living room, he looked at their faces, he saw their pain, and suddenly he realized how much he loved these wonderful people, and his heart just kind of broke for them, and he was overcome with emotion, and he tried to quote Psalm 23, and he got out as much as the Lord is my shepherd, and then he said he just sort of exploded into tears, and he cried so hard that the family rushed over to him and started ministering to him, and they took him to the couch, and they kind of mopped his brow, and they brought him a glass of water, and he said he felt so ashamed and so embarrassed by that and he felt that he had failed kind of miserably and he felt kind of humiliated and after this um, he went through the funeral and so forth and then he went to his bishop and asked to be moved to another church because he was just so embarrassed by all of this and didn't think he could minister there anymore and he was transferred well a few years go by and um, every year at annual conference he would kind of hide from this family he just couldn't face them but one evening, he came around the corner, and there they were. He couldn't avoid them. He, he couldn't hide at that point. And their faces lit up when they saw him. And they said, Al, we're so glad to see you. You know, our, our family loves you. We appreciate you so much. You know, we miss you. We talk about you all the time. So, you know, we love, we've loved all of our pastors. You're the one who helped us the most. And Al said, Really? And they said, yes. He said, we'll never forget how you came and you cried with us when daddy died. Well, I think there's a really important lesson there. When people are in grief, whether you're a pastor or you're a friend or a family member or whoever you are, people don't want theological pronouncements at that point. They just want us to come and love them. They just want us to come and to cry with them. If we know that, certainly God knows that too, right? John 11.35, shortest verse in the Bible, one you can easily memorize. You can tell all your friends that you have scripture memorized, right? <laughs> because you can say to them, John 11.35, Jesus wept. When Jesus saw Mary weeping because her brother Lazarus had died, and then he saw all those around Mary were also weeping too. 
Jesus was deeply moved in spirit, the scripture tells us, and his heart was troubled, and we're told Jesus wept. Jesus wept. He wept with those that he loved, and he still does. He hurts with us, he feels our pain, he faces all of our suffering with us, and when it comes time, one thing we can know is that the Lord is with us, hurting with us, and that he's going to love us through it. Jesus will walk through the valley with us, and he'll do whatever it takes to pull us back up and to help us to move on, because yes, Jesus wept with those that he loved, and Jesus still does. He also raised from someone from the dead, and he still does. When we're feeling unreachable, or we're feeling down in the pits, when we're having those days when it seems like we're doing nothing but walking through those dark valleys, Jesus still calls our name, raises us back up, and gives us new life. That's why God wanted to come to earth, to be born here to Mary and Joseph and to live with us. That's how badly God wants us to know how much we're loved and how much we're understood and how much we're cared for, that we were died for, and that he lived again for. You know, Jesus' gift of new life, it wasn't just a gift for Lazarus on that day, although, of course, you know, Lazarus benefited from that. But it was a gift to everybody who was there that day, who witnessed that miracle of new life. Now, take just a moment and try to imagine that you were there that day in that crowd, how he would have touched your life to witness something that amazing, you know, that, that gift of new life, to witness that love that brought new life out of death, to witness that power of God to make all things new. This is Jesus' gift to us as well. Jesus' gift of resurrection that day isn't just a gift of life after death. It's, an, you know, it's amazing how, how it stands right there, but it's also a gift that points us to that knowledge that life always trumps death, any kind of death, you know, death of faith, death of hope, death of meaning, death of identity, death of a friendship, death of joy, death of a relationship, death of a community. You know, from out of that place, Jesus declares and offers life, something that was definitively shown to us then in that resurrection that we know as Easter. Tony Capolo tells the story of his, his pastor, um, he goes to a church in Philadelphia. It's an inner city church. And um, his, his pastor and he were kind of having a, a battle of the sermons, you know, one, one day. And he says that something happened that he's never going to forget. He said he preached first. And Tony said he felt like, you know, when he was preaching, he just felt hot. He said he, he felt like, you know, he was so hot he even stopped to listen to himself. And um, he sat down and he said to his pastor, now see if you can top that one. Well, the black pastor said to him, son, you ain't seen nothing yet. And for an hour and a half, the pastor repeated these words over and over again. It's Friday, but Sundays are coming. Tony said, I, I never heard anything like it. He just kept saying it and the congregation was spellbound by it. It's Friday. Mary, Jesus' mother, is crying her eyes out. That's her son up there on the cross, and he's dying in this agonizing death of a, of a crucifixion of a criminal. But it's only Friday, the preacher said, and Sunday's a coming. The apostles were down and out, and Jesus was their leader. He was being killed by these evil men. But it's only Friday, the preacher said, and Sunday's a coming. The apostles were really down and out. Jesus was their leader. He was being killed by evil men. But it's only Friday, and Sunday is a coming. The devil thought that he had won. He thought he could <laughs> outwit me, he said, but I've got you now because it's only Friday, and Sunday is a coming. Tony said his pastor went on like that for like 30 minutes, 40 minutes, an hour. And each time he said it's Friday, the crowd would respond back to him, but Sunday is a coming. An hour and 15 minutes he preached. It's Friday and evil has triumphed over good. Jesus is dying up there on the cross. The world is turned upside down. This shouldn't happen, but it's only Friday and Sundays are coming. It's Friday, but Sundays are coming. Mary Magdalene is out of her mind with grief because 
her Lord was being killed and Jesus had turned her life from sin to grace and now he was dead, but it's only Friday and Sunday's a coming. The place was rocking, Tony said, for an hour and a half, Friday, but Sunday's coming. Friday, but Sunday's a coming. The sisters and the brothers are suffering. It isn't fair, all they have to go through, but it's only Friday and Sunday's a coming. I was exhausted, Tony said. It was the best sermon I've ever had. And that old preacher was saying it and the people were with him. It's Friday and Sunday's a coming. It was powerful, Tony said. It was personal. And that's what God wants us to know that it's personal for God, and he wants us to know it personally as well. That in our lives, we're, we're gonna have many Fridays, but every time we face one, God is there beside us, letting us know that Sunday is a coming. If anyone ever asks you, you know, why would God ever want to be born into this life, and to live here, and suffer here, to die here, Tell them it's because God wanted us to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that we are going to face Fridays in this life. But the promise is that Sunday is a coming. Amen. Let's begin our prayer time with there's just something about that name. <coughs> Loving God, as we walk with Jesus on his way to the cross, help each of us take up our own cross and walk with him with sure confidence that even though that path may go through suffering and death, that he walks with us always and it ultimately brings us life and shows us an unending love. We take a moment, loving God, to ponder and to contemplate the the many things that may weigh us down or hold us captive, those things that may entomb us or leave us feeling lost, things like anger and frustration or disappointment and grief. But we take all of these things and we place them in your hands with the strong belief that you will hold them for us and heal us with a peace that passes all understanding. Thank you for your comfort and your promise to walk with us no matter what we may face. May you continue to bless us in the days to come. May you give healing for all those that we mentioned here today and those that we know 
within our hearts need healing in whatever form they may need healing in. And may we continue to see your face, loving God, in all others around us, and also even in our own face, our words, our deeds. Please journey with us. Give us a heart of gratitude. Help us to hear your voice and to follow wherever you may lead today and every day. We lift up these prayers in Jesus' name and place them in your hands. Amen. It's so awesome how much God entrusts us with in this world to spread that good news of love to all others around us. So let's think about that as we give back to God a portion of uh, what we have been blessed with. <clears throat> them, we pray, that the power of your love to change lives will be a reality in our neighborhood and community. Amen. You may be seated, and let's sing together how great is our God.
discipleship. Call us forth to repentance and new life. Call us to listen and to hear your word. Call us to serve and respond in your way. Call us to live always with hope and love. Amen. Amen.